Blessings family, this is your brother L. What I want to speak on today is overcoming the negativity of the Hebrew community. There's drama in all communities, no matter whether it be the Muslim community, the conscious community, the business community, the health and wellness community, you name it, there's going to be drama because wherever there's humans, there's drama. Wherever there's humans, there's division. Wherever there's humans, there's confusion. We need to focus specifically on the Hebrew community, though, because we as the children of Israel, we are meant to be a light to all nations. We're meant to be a light to the Hebrew and Gentile alike. So for us to be in disarray causes even more destruction than when other communities are in disarray. There's many people that are truly striving to enter in that narrow road. There's many people out there that are still learning about the ways of the Most High. This discussion right here is to help us all, whether we be seasoned and veterans in the walk or new in the walk, it's important for us all to be able to overcome the negativity of the Hebrew community, to be able to be aware of the pitfalls in this community so that we don't be of those who fall away. Because the scripture says that there indeed would be a great falling away. We see this taking place because even as I speak at this time, there's a great leaving and departing of people that are leaving the Hebrew community, leaving the walk. Yes, we do understand that many of these people was not built for this walk in the first place, so they're falling away. Then there's other instances where we as the Hebrew community have to look at ourselves and say, what are we doing individually and collectively to push so many people away? Because if you look at the Hebrew community, if you compare it to a stock, you know the prices of stock go up and down. I'll say from 2012 on through 2015, 2016, the awakening was gaining so much traction, so much momentum. The stock was rising. We could just use as an example, the stock of the Hebrew community during that era was at 10,000. But little by little, things begin to take place where people have stopped taking it seriously. And we can say that the stock has dropped from 10,000 to like 500. People are leaving the Hebrew community for various reasons just like they've done to the church, just like they've done to so many of these other organizations where they get disappointed and disillusioned, where they have so much expectation and hope in these people, in this doctrine, in this community, and feel as they've been let down, feel as if leadership has failed them, feel as if there's no power in what they've connected themselves to. So many are departing and leaving and falling away from the Hebrew community. Like I said, some of these individuals was never built for the walk in the first place, but many times it has to do with the negativity of the Hebrew community. See, negativity is one thing, but negativity is negativity times a thousand. And we see a lot of negativity in the Hebrew community. And since that's the case, since only the Most High himself can get rid of that. And since that hasn't happened yet, since we still are waiting on the consummation of all things and for the regathering of the tribes and for the kingdom to be set up, while we're here, we have to deal with this negativity. So what I want to do is give brothers and sisters the equippings, the mindset on how to navigate through the negativity of the Hebrew community so that you don't be of those who end up falling away. And I'm going to touch on some of the main things that's making the Hebrew community lose its stock value. I'm going to touch on these things that's making people run away from this community in so many large numbers now, and why so many people don't take it serious. We're going to pinpoint some of these things so we can avoid these pitfalls. Now, First thing I want to touch on that has been a great stumbling block and a great source of negativity in the Hebrew community 
is this mindset of America only, this mindset of American centrism, where some brothers and sisters may be unlearned and some may do this subconsciously without meaning to do it, but many times in this community, we have folks that only focus on America. They focus on America as the end-all, be-all of the whole Hebrew experience, the whole Hebrew history, and the whole Hebrew destiny. They see everything through the lens of America, as if there's not this vast, big world out there beyond America. The scripture says that we've been scattered to the four corners of the earth. Israel is everywhere, not just America. And, you know, it's a double-edged sword to this. It's a blessing. It's also a curse. Here's why it's a blessing. Because this global awakening that you've been seeing of this truth being spread to the four corners of the earth, it has been primarily the American-dwelling uh, Hebrews that have been the one disseminating this message. That's not to take away from the work of any of you other brothers and sisters that's in other uh, continents, other nations. We see you, we see your work as well. But the truth has to be told. Up until about uh, the last 10 to 20 years, nobody has really been teaching and pumping this truth as much as the Hebrews in America. All this, these decades and centuries, other brothers and sisters that are in these other nations that have been practicing the faith, that have been walking the narrow road, they've had so many opportunities to wake us up to tell us who we are, but they never did. Quiet as church mouses for all that time, but it's been many of the American Negroes putting the videos out, many of the American Hebrews um, lifting up their voice like a trumpet to share the truth. It's not been the Hebrews in these other areas. Again, not to take away from their work. I'm talking about the majority of the awakening has been led and spearheaded by Hebrews in America. That's the blessing of it, that the Father has used the, many of the Hebrews in America to get that truth out there to our people. Nobody else was trying to wake us up. They was fine with us just looking at ourselves as African Americans or uh, trying to you know, connect and attach ourselves to these other peoples that are truly not our people. They was fine with us having a wrong thinking about ourselves and thinking low about ourselves. They never spoke up, never stood up for us, nothing. But it was the most high through his spirit that caused us to speak this truth to power. And it's been a blessing to many the world over. But here's the curse of it too, though. With Many of these American-born, American-raised Hebrews being the ones telling the truth at times because some of them have never really traveled to other places to see the Hebrew experience in other nations and other continents, their teaching is kind of skewed with an America-only bias where America becomes the whole totality of the Hebrew experience to them. Because like I said, Many of them have never been other places or traveled to commune and fellowship with some of their other bloodline brothers and sisters in other nations. Remember, family, even in the days of the Messiah and the apostles, they traveled. They traveled to different places. They weren't just in one area. Imagine if the Messiah in his days would have stood up and said, look, I'm from Nazareth. Anybody that ain't from Nazareth, you ain't no brew. Nah, he didn't have that type of mentality. That's negativity. That's a nigga mindset. That's that same mindset of if you ain't from my neighborhood, you ain't uh, with us. That's that nigga mindset. The apostles and the Messiah didn't have that. They traveled all around the other villages teaching and preaching because they knew some of their other bloodline people was in other villages and other areas. Apostle Paul traveled all over the place. Peter and all them traveled all over the, uh, the place to reach our people that were in other areas. They didn't have that negativity mindset that where they were was where it was popping, and if uh, folks wasn't from where they was from, then they wasn't a brew. That wasn't the mentality that they had. 
and we can't have that mentality today. The scripture lets us know in Revelation chapter 7, 1 through 9, that the chosen will be regathered from all areas, all nations, all multitudes, all tongues. In the Testament of Naphtali chapter 6, we read about the vision of the sons of Jacob where they saw us being spread to all four corners of the earth. Naphtali even had a vision of a boat crashing and the boat uh, carrying all the children of Israel to the four corners of the earth and then ultimately seeing us regathered. Isaiah chapter 11, Isaiah 11, 11 and uh, verse 12, it says, he shall set up an ensign for the nation and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. It don't say he going to gather them just from America. But many times people get turned off about this walk because you have folks making it seem like uh, only the American Hebrews are the end-all, be-all. But we got Hebrews in the UK. We got Hebrews in Australia. We got Hebrews in Tanzania. We got Hebrews in Nigeria. We got Hebrews in Ghana. We got Hebrews in Morocco. We got Hebrews in Brazil. And when you travel the world and see the experience of your other brothers and sisters, you don't have an America-only mentality about things because that's a negativity mentality. So a lot of people have been turned off from this walk because they've been hearing people that seem to focus on America only when our people, it's bigger than just America. And that's, that's why the scripture tells us the importance of traveling and experiencing other cultures and getting outside the box of your neighborhood or your nation. Check out the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 34, beginning at verse 9. It says, a well-taught man knows a great deal, and a man of experience will discourse with understanding. The man who has not been tested knows little, but the man who has wandered far gains great ingenuity. I have seen much in my travels, and I understand more than I can describe. So here he's saying the importance of traveling, the importance of going to other areas. Even if uh, you're not able to physically travel to those places and get some stamps on that passport, even reading books and looking at uh, videos of the experience of some of your other people in other areas, people that is of your same bloodline, still keeping the same laws and commands that you do, but they may be in Tanzania, they may be in Nigeria, they may be in Australia, they may be in the Solomon Islands. It's not just America. This is what we need to understand. We really, truly do. Because a lot of people don't take this walk seriously because Negroes is making it seem like America is the totality of everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, starting at verse 1, it says, It is not so with the man who applies himself and studies the law of the Most High. He searches out the wisdom of all the ancients and busies himself with prophecies. He observes the discourse of famous men and penetrates the intricacies of figures. He searches out the hidden meaning of proverbs and acquaints himself with the obscurities of figures. He will serve among great men and appear before rulers. He will travel through the lands of strange peoples and test what is good and what is evil among men. So the scripture says that in order for us to be well-learned and well-versed, we have to understand what's going on in other areas by traveling, by reading, by studying, so we can have a well-rounded understanding of this truth. Right now in the conscious community, there's a great divide going on between uh, foundational uh, Black Americans and, you know, uh, melanated people from other areas. Here in the Hebrew community, we should not have that same negativity mentality. Because we know that the Hebrew people have been spread to all four corners of the earth. But you got Negroes out here that is America banging, basically saying if you ain't a brew from America, then you ain't no brew. That's negativity. That's small, petty thinking. It's a big world out there. And some of our people have not seen the world outside of America, so the way they teach is skewed to a focus on only America. So 
the solution to overcome the negativity of the narrow-minded, America-only Hebrew type of thinking is, as I said, to study, to research, to travel to other places, to see the experience of your Hebrew people in other areas, to get that passport stamped up, or to do some reading and researching about our people in other areas, because we're not just in America, and America is not the end-all, be-all of the Hebrew experience. Now, a second major stumbling block that's causing a lot of people to depart from the Hebrew community is the doctrines don't make sense. Many of the doctrines of the Hebrew community don't make sense, and you have a lot of people in the Hebrew community that get puffed up by knowledge. They get puffed up by knowledge. Now, there's a double-edged sword and a blessing and curse to this as well, because it's a blessing because our people are finally reading, studying, and researching. Hallelujah for that. There was once upon a time you couldn't get a Negro to pick up a book for nothing. Now our people are going to books. They're going to seek out knowledge. And to that I say hallelujah, and I celebrate that. I would rather our people be doing that and searching out the books of the Most High and searching out the knowledge of the truth than to be doing other things that's not profitable for salvation. So all praise to the Most High that we're getting back to these books and getting back to that understanding. That's a good thing. So let's never discourage our brothers and sisters from reading, researching, picking up these books, getting into these lost books. Let's never discourage them from that. Because once upon a time, we couldn't get them to do that. So let's celebrate the fact they are doing that now. That's the blessing. Now, the curse to that is sometimes what can happen is people start getting into all these extra books and they become spiritually unbalanced. They get puffed up with knowledge, and they start book banging and knowledge banging on other brothers and sisters, and the doctrines begin not to make sense, and that drives people away. Like, for instance, in Christianity, right, they told our people that we was the cursed sons of Ham, that we was just destined to be uh, slaves and the lowest of the low and never prosper in life, period. And our only hope was to sit around waiting to get raptured, to get snatched up in the sky somewhere, uh, to eternally be with this white Jesus and this white God where we would still be subservient even throughout eternity. So let the Christians tell it, uh, we're never going to prosper in this life. We're the cursed sons of Ham. And we got to wait on a rapture to get taken up to this white heaven where we're still going to be serving and low for eternity. That's what the Christians told us. Now, when you come over to the Hebrew side, you're still told that you're cursed. They're not telling you that you're the sons of Ham. Now they're telling you you're the sons of Jacob, but you're still cursed. Not, you're not going to prosper in this life. Uh, Esau always going to have his foot on your neck until a UFO comes to pick you up. And then you get to rule over everybody else. But until then, nothing you do prospers, you're cursed, uh, can't have good marriages, can't run a good business, you're going to have sickness in your body because you're the cursed sons of Jacob. That's what you're told when you first come in. And then shortly after that, you're told, look, that's only for 400 years. And the 400 years, you're told, ended in 2019. Boom, you're free. Everything's good. 400 years is up. The shackles is off. You're good. But then you still look around, and Negroes still getting shot down by the police, and the cops is getting off. You look around, and it seems like not much has changed, but they're telling you the chains are off. And you're thinking the chains are off, and you're out of captivity. Then they turn right back around and tell you, yeah, even though the 400 years is up and you're free, you're still in captivity, though. Wait a minute. How the hell am I free yet still in captivity? How are you telling me the chains is off because the 400 years is up, but then you're telling me the chains is strapped back on and I'm still cursed? So what was the whole 400-year wait about if the, the chains are still on? So it doesn't make sense. And what takes place is, 
people begin to just feel like failure and defeat is their destiny. If, if a Negro has a mentality that they're cursed and in captivity and nothing that they ever touch in this life will work out, then they're like, okay, why even start a business because I'm cursed, it's going to fail. Why even try to have a good marriage because they're telling me I'm cursed and in captivity and it's going to fail. Why even try to uh, travel to other places to get new experiences? Why even try to enjoy life because they're telling me I'm cursed and in captivity? And that's what it's doing to people's mind. It keeps them stuck on a failure, mediocre, defeat type of mindset because somebody's telling them they're, they're just cursed until a UFO comes to pick them up. That's why people are running away from this community because they don't see many people who are winners in life in the community. If the whole doctrine is based on being a loser to be a Hebrew, people are like, I don't want to be in that. They telling me I got to be a loser to be one of the most I've chosen. Negativity. Nobody wants to talk about the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, of how those can be unlocked by obeying the most high. Read the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. And you have so many people that book bang saying, don't read this book. Don't read that book. Uh, you need to be over here reading that. Uh, some Negroes are saying, don't read the New Testament. Others are saying, don't read the Old Testament. Some are saying, don't read Jasher. It's like you got all these uh, librarians and all these scholars telling people what books to go into and what books not to go into, and that confuses people because they're like, damn, what can I read? What, what can I do? So you got all these people lording over the libraries and books, and you got Negro saying, you know, if you ain't in this book, you ain't got the whole truth. If you ain't in uh, Jasher in the Book of Mormon, you ain't got the whole truth. Or if you in the New Testament, you ain't uh, learning the truth. So for somebody that is coming into the walk and just trying to learn the ways of the Most High, you got all these Negroes trying to stand as uh, bodyguards and uh, like bouncers at a club telling people what books to and to not to read, it's confusion, it's negativity, it's getting puffed up by knowledge. This is why we need to learn from the example of Enoch. Whenever you read in Jasher, the book of Jasher, read chapter 3 about Enoch and what he would do so as not to get caught up in the confusion of doctrines he would separate himself unto the Most High. He studied and fasted and prayed to the Most High to get understanding directly from the Most High. Now, I'm not saying that we don't need teachers, that we don't need uh, mentors and things like that, but to prevent from getting puffed up by knowledge, you individually have to search the scriptures for yourself. I've said this all the time in my ministry from the beginning. To not get caught up in all the negativity of the Hebrew community, of Negroes not knowing what they talk about, go to the scriptures for yourself. And don't try to get wrapped up in all these other extra books until you've gotten the basics and foundation. We got Negroes trying to hop into the Book of Mormon, trying to hop into uh, 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 Jubilees, Jasher, and all these extra books without first getting a foundation in Torah, the Messiah, and the prophets. If you ain't even read Genesis yet, why are you playing around in the Book of Mormon? If you ain't even uh, keeping the Sabbath correctly or um, honoring your mother and father or overcoming fornication and the sins of the flesh, why are you playing around in all these other extra books? Negro, you ain't even learned how to wipe your behind yet. And you're trying to hop into all these extra books. This is why we got Negroes that come into this and ain't been in the truth two weeks and automatically exalt themselves to be the chief of the 144,000. You want to be the chief of the 144,000 and you ain't even got the basics yet. This is what's going on out here. Folks getting puffed up by knowledge. And the scripture warns against this as well. Let's go back to the book of Ecclesiasticus. Let's go to Ecclesiasticus uh, 
chapter 3 and verse 17. And let's see what's happening with some of these folks that get puffed up by knowledge. The scripture says, my child, carry on your business in humility, and you will be loved by men whom the Most High accepts. The greater you are, the more you must practice humility, and you will find favor with the Most High. For the Most High's power is great, and he is glorified by the humble-minded. Listen to verse 21. Do not seek for what is too hard for you, and do not investigate what is beyond your strength. Think of the commands that have been given you, for you have no need of the things that are hidden. So the scripture here is saying, Negro, get, get the basic commands right first. Get the basics of the walk right first before you try to dabble in all these other extra books. Niggas getting puffed up by knowledge, man. That's that negativity. Don't even got the basics down, but want to hop in all these other deeper hidden understandings. Ain't even keeping the Sabbath right. Uh, fornicating. Ain't even truly married to the, to the uh, person they with fornicating, lying, uh, stealing, all manner of sins and wickedness of the flesh, but want to jump into all these other extra deeper understandings. Negativity. That's what that is. The scripture says, think of the commands that have been given you, for you have no need of the things that are hidden. Do not waste your labor on what is superfluous to your work, for things beyond man's understanding have been shown you. For many have been led astray by their imagination, and a wicked fancy has made their minds slip. This is why we see the epidemic of folks going crazy and the, the mental illness epidemic. The scripture right here says it, that there's folks out there that drive themselves crazy trying to have all these deeper understandings without getting the basics. So it's important as you navigate through this community to overcome the temptation to be puffed up by knowledge to overcome that temptation, because remember, it was the temptation of having extra knowledge that got uh, even Adam pop, wanting to know a whole bunch of stuff more than what they needed to know. Now, that's not saying that we don't seek knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Wisdom is the stability of our times, and all by getting, get understanding is what the scripture says. Yes, we must seek knowledge. We must seek truth. But we also must remember Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12 and 13, where he says, and further, by these, my son, be admonished of making many books, there is no end, and much study is the weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the Most High and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. So the scripture tells us over and over again that getting puffed up by knowledge can be a stumbling block. Negroes wanting to know too much, too quick, and don't even have the basics down. That's a, a big source of negativity in the Hebrew community because you have folks that are knowledge banging and puffed up with knowledge, and it's all vanity because these same individuals would, will uh, have all this knowledge, all these hidden books, and only for them to later go astray because there's a real heavy uh, anti-Messiah spirit wrapped up in that getting puffed up by knowledge because Negroes start feeling like they know so much and getting wrapped up in all these other books that eventually they start turning on the Messiah. They start feeling like, well, uh, I'm greater than the Messiah. They start feeling like, well, I don't, we don't need the Messiah because I got all this knowledge over here from this hidden book that's probably written by a heathen that I'm wrapped up in that I think is so much better than what my own ancestors have revealed. I'm wrapped up in something that now I think it's better than what uh, uh, Moshe and Isaiah, all these brothers that Moshe saw the most high face to face. But we got Negroes out here thinking that because they got hold of some lost book somewhere that all of a sudden now they're lifted up above Moses. They're, they're lifted up above the 144,000 now because some book they found somewhere. This is what's going on. This is part of the negativity in the Hebrew community. That's why I said what Enoch did is a practice that we all must do. We always understand that we're supposed to separate from the heathen and separate from the ways of the world, but sometimes you got to separate from niggas too. There's many times where I have to take what I call a nigger vacation. 
I got to take a vacation from niggas, man, just like Enoch did. When you read in Joshua 3, it's that Enoch would separate himself from the people, and he would become more and more distant from the people to get more attached to the Most High. He ain't want to deal with all the negativity, the debates, the drama, the doctrines, the confusion. Enoch was like, look, I just want to hear it straight from the Father. I don't know what the hell you niggas got going on. I'm trying to hear it from the Father because y'all ain't on nothing but confusion. This is what you have to do sometimes. We know the, the scripture says that uh, the scripture is of no private interpretation. So I'm not telling you to uh, have private interpretation of the scripture. Yes, we do need fellowship. Yes, we do need to have that iron sharpened iron with other brothers and sisters. But there does come a time you even have to separate to an extent from Negroes because they'll get you all confused. And next thing you know, you doubting the Messiah, you doubting the Most High. They done got you wrapped up in some book that's anti-Messiah to the core. Next thing you know, you out of the walk. You ain't on the narrow road because somebody done made you think yourself out of the walk. You done got puffed up with knowledge. Now you ain't even following the most high no more. Family, I've been in this walk quite a while, and I've seen a lot of them come and go. And a lot of these Negroes that go off the narrow road, they go off because they start feeling like they know too much. It starts off with them taking shots at Paul. Then they taking shots at the New Testament. Then they taking shots at the Messiah. The next thing you know, they're saying they're the Messiah. The next thing you know, uh, they get into ancestor and universe worship. The next thing you know, they're totally out of the walk. I've seen the pattern play out time and time again. And it always starts with Negroes getting puffed up by knowledge. So we must overcome the temptation to get puffed up by knowledge. Do what Enoch did. Separate yourself from the Hebrew community and those toxic in the Hebrew community. As the scripture says, mark those that cause divisions among you. Don't get wrapped up in that. When Negroes try to come to you saying you need to get in this book, you need to get in that book, if you've read the book, you can just say, you know, look, bro, look, sis, I've, uh, I've went through that book. I've checked it out. This is what I got from it. This is what I didn't get from it. Um, I would never tell you not to go in, into something. Just seek the most high in the kingdom first and be led of the spirit. That's it. Because it's amazing whenever Negroes come to you saying, you need to get in this book, you need to get in that book. It's like they get amazed whenever you don't want to argue with them. It's like they tell you about all these extra books not to really help you in your walk, not so that you can be uh, a more pure um spirit-led uh, Israelite, they're not doing that for that reason. They want to book bang. They want to argue. They're not telling you to go into this or that book to, to help you. They're doing that because they want you to feel like you don't know as much as them. So whenever Negroes come to me with that, I'm just like, you know, that's what's up. I'm glad you're getting something from that book, bro. I'm glad you're getting something from that, sis. Uh, I'm not for or against that book. I'm going to research a little bit more into it. I'm going to be uh, led of the spirit and see what the father speaks to me. But, man, all praise to the father. If that book is working out for you, I'm not going to throw no shade, you know. Check it out. See, see what you can find in there. And in the meantime, I'm going to take a look at it, too, if I'm led. Boom, that's it. No argument, no debate. But it's like if Negroes feel like you're not following their advice of a book to get into, then they want to argue with you and ostracize you. So don't get wrapped up in that. Be like Enoch and seek the face of the Most High for yourself. Be firmly rooted in the commands that's already been given to you. And then let the Spirit, let the Ruach lead you and guide you to deeper understandings if it be the Most High will in his timing. Hallelujah. So that's another thing that's causing people to depart from the Hebrew community because the doctrines are confusing and don't make sense. And you got so many different people speaking so many different things. There's not a clear, concise uh, understanding in the Hebrew community. There's really not. So you can get tossed to and fro easily. So I always tell brothers and sisters, read the entire scripture for yourself, cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. Study the Torah, study the words of the prophet and words of the Messiah. Then after after you're firmly rooted in that, 
then get into the Jashers, the Jubilees, the, the Book of Enochs. And then as you're reading those, compare and compra- contrast it with Torah, Prophets, and Messiah. And then after you're well learned in that, then start venturing into other stuff. But don't be hopping in all these other extra books if you ain't even got Torah down yet. So, and then the final thing, I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, Another cause of negativity in the Hebrew community is the mindset is very limited. The mindset is very limited. In the Hebrew community, you have to understand that you can't get everything that you need just from the Hebrew community. You have a lot of people that come into the walk and they have that zeal at first. And they're like, look, man, you know, brew everything. Trying to be with my brews. All I want to listen to is my brews. You know, they get that zeal. And that's cool because we as the children of Israel, as the people of the Most High, we do need to have that solidarity. Yet, what you also need to understand is that only the Messiah can separate the wheat from the tares. So there's still tares among the community. And you need to understand that you may not be able to get all that you need just from the Hebrew community. What do I mean by that? I mean that there's times where you can learn things from other communities. Let's say that you got a brother or sister that's trying to lose 100 pounds, just as an example, trying to lose some weight, trying to get their health and fitness up. You may not be able to get the the mentoring and the uh, camaraderie that you need from other Hebrews, you may not be able to find a fitness-oriented uh, Hebrew. So you may need to be a part of a group that there's somebody there that can teach you how to lose that weight. Because listen, you're not going to learn how to lose the 100 pounds by sitting around with Negroes that's doing nothing but talking about Esau and Deuteronomy 28 all day. It's like, I'm trying to lose this 100 pounds, so let me get in a fitness group. Let me join a fitness community. So sometimes we have to go to other communities to get the knowledge that we need because not everything is going to be given to you from the Hebrew community. But if you have people that just want to stay only in the Hebrew community thinking they're going to get all the knowledge they need for life, that's not the case, family. The Hebrew community will give you a lot of knowledge about history, uh, teaching you the lies that have been told and getting you straight on that. But there's other things that, that they can't. Uh, teach or that they don't teach. Let's say if uh, you want to get involved in business and entrepreneurship, you you probably won't uh, learn how to run a business, a successful business, when you're sitting around talking to Negroes that's telling you uh, you don't need to be trying to run a business in Esau's world and uh, you, just, you just need to be uh, working for the Gentiles and waiting for the UFO to pick you up. Those type of Negroes are not going to teach you nothing about entrepreneurship. So you have to join entrepreneur groups. Maybe you have to go on Clubhouse and get in some of those rooms where they're discussing entrepreneurship, even if it's a lot of Gentiles in there. As long as you have your Hebrew identity, as long as you're not going in there and cooning and stripping yourself of your Hebrew identity, then you can go to these other communities to learn the knowledge that you need to learn to then take back to help your people. But many times you won't learn the skill sets that you need just from Hebrews only. We are going to become that dominant people. We are going to become that dominant nation. But at this time, while we're still waiting on the return of the Messiah and the consummation of all things, sometimes you have to go to other communities to learn skill sets that would help you in your walk in providing for your household and making your life better while we wait on the kingdom. There's many times that uh, my wife and I took entrepreneur courses or got in entrepreneur groups, and we was the only Hebrews in there. Do you think I cared about that? I was just in there to get the knowledge, to get the understanding, and then apply it to make my business thrive so then I could turn around and teach it to my people and help them. A lot of the knowledge that I needed to gain, how to – prosper in that area, I wasn't getting it from the Hebrews. And that's cool. Not everybody is supposed to give you everything. 
And that's part of having wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to go to those places you need to go to to get the knowledge and wisdom that you need to get to provide for your household, to live in the blessings of Deuteronomy 28, to be able to learn from anybody, whether they be Hebrew or Gentile. So keep that in mind. Don't pigeonhole yourself only to the Hebrew community. Yes, keep your Hebrew identity. Yes, keep the laws and commands. But understand in this world, you're going to bump elbows with many types of other people. Yes, there is a time for us to have Hebrew-only businesses, Hebrew-only ministries, Hebrew-only communities. Yes, there is a time for that being separate. And there's also a time where you must go out and rub elbows, whether it's to do business, whether it's to go out in the workplace, whether it's to get knowledge or a skill set and to learn. So don't pigeonhole yourself only in the Hebrew community because their knowledge only goes up to a point. There's only so much that you can get from them at this time until the Messiah regathered us, regathers us to make us that mighty nation. You see? So many examples I can use. There may be brothers and sisters out there who want to start a trucking business. You may not be able to learn that knowledge directly from some Hebrews. It may be a Gentile that teaches it. There may be brothers and sisters out there that want to get into the uh, holistic medicine. There, sometimes the one who gives you the knowledge that you need is not another Hebrew. So keep that uh, mind open and always be able to search for knowledge and wisdom in whatever place that is found as long as you're not compromising your identity, breaking the laws and commands, coon in or anything like that to get the knowledge and understand it. So don't get disappointed if you have all these expectations and hopes for your people and they let you down. Our people, we constantly let the most high down. So don't get disappointed when Hebrews let you down because it's going to happen. And I see a lot of people that they depart from the walk because some, some other Hebrew has disappointed them. They have all these hopes and expectations for their people, and then when those expectations don't get met, then they start getting bitter at the Most High and bitter at their people, and they want to leave the Hebrew community. No. Go into it with the understanding that Negroes is going to let you down, because that's what Negroes do. They let people down. They disappoint you. But don't let that disappointment make you depart from the narrow road and depart from the Most High. You still have to endure to the end. I'm just giving you these keys and solutions how to navigate through that so you don't get disappointed in the Hebrew community expecting so much from them, but then they never meet the expectations you have. You have to know how to immerse yourself in other communities to get the knowledge that you need for the goal you need to accomplish. There may be brothers and sisters out there that want to be uh, contractors, builders, and you have to learn that trade in other communities because there may not be a a uh, uh, Hebrew contractor that can sit there and take you up under their wing to teach you how to be a Hebrew and be a success, successful contractor and businessman or businesswoman. Sometimes you got to get that knowledge from other places. Sometimes you got to take those seminars, take those courses, watch those videos, get that mentorship, even if it's not from other Hebrews. Now, it would be nice if we can get all that only from the Hebrew community, but that's just not realistic to expect that. Don't expect more from your people than you are even capable of delivering yourself. Don't expect more from your people than you are even capable of doing, okay? So keep these things in mind, and you should be fine as you navigate through the Hebrew community. These are ways that you can overcome the negativity of the Hebrew community and expand your mind and expand your spirit and stay spirit-led. I pray that this discussion has helped someone out there Continue to stay tapped into the ministry as we do the work of the Father in his strength, in his grace. All praise be to the Most High. Shalom.